Roger here. Um, I am Katie Nelson, and I'm also known as Katie the Creative Lady. You can find me at katiethecreativelady.com, where I blog about all sorts of creative activities, but I especially focus on making memories and documenting memories. Those are my favorite topics for sure. I'm going to talk today about how to use rectangle templates for digital scrapbooking. This is often referred to as rectangle scrapping, and this is a really fun size to work with, maybe a less common size to work with, so I want to show you some ideas and give you some tips. This is my Simple Standards template set, and it's a redo of a set I had put out a long time ago in my shop. Um, the only thing I've redone is I, I did change the shadow settings to match what I am currently doing on all of my templates. So if you already own this set from a long time ago and you don't want to have to repurchase it, all you need to do is just change your shadow settings to what um, I have done on my other templates or what I explain in my shadowing tutorial. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But uh, this is a set that I think you'll find very useful. And uh, I will be using some of the pages, uh, some of the designs today in this tutorial. I also have um, put out a new template set called Modern Standards. This one is more of a graphic design type of look. It does not include shadowing. And um, there's a reason why, because it kind of went with the style, but you certainly could add shadows. And again, I'll, I'll explain that uh, where to find that video that tells you to do that. So this is my YouTube channel and you can see it will start with my latest uh, video and go back to my oldest ones. You'll want to look for, if you're not familiar with how to use layered templates, you'll want to be sure you look for this one. Um, it's already on the channel and it goes over all the basics with using a template. So in this tutorial, I'm assuming that you already know those. And so um, I will just proceed with that. I'm going to take one of the templates from the simple standard set and create a Christmas page. And this is one of my favorite designs. It's really easy to work with. There's the six uh, spaces that are great for photos or cards. This one on the bottom is fun to fill with paper or use for journaling. Or if you have a longer, wider photo, that also works well for that too. So these photos are actually from 2011. And I, because it's a Christmas page and a holiday page, I knew my December moments, pocket cards and papers would work well with these colors. You can see the page I've created. It's very simple, but I love it. And it has that little blue sparkle, snowflakey kind of paper from that set. Uh, one of the pocket cards, that's always a favorite of mine. And a journaling card, so we can add the details. We can know what is happening on this page. And I was able to use those three photos and this longer, wider one on the bottom. I wanted to add a little bit more to go with that movie that we saw. I'm explaining that in the journaling. I had taken a picture of the sign. So I wanted something that represented the movie. All I did was just Google that movie and find an image from Google. And now it's not super high quality. I went printed as a big photo, but in a little space like this, it will print up just great. Here's another example of this uh, rectangle kind of page that I like. So this is another one from my simple standard set and some photos from our garden in 2011. And uh, I really like to keep track of what I have grown in my gardens over the years. I gardened for oh, probably like 18 years and now I no longer have a garden and I do kind of miss it, but it's also a lot of work. So um, uh, what I've done is I needed, a, I knew I just wanted a really neutral background. So I knew that paper pack would be great for it. And I knew I wanted to include some journaling. So I looked for a journaling card and thought of the groovy green set with the garden that goes so well. And you can see how that turned out. It was really easy, 
just um, very clean looking design. Great for our garden journal. Now with the modern standards template set, uh, these are really fun to use as well. And I'll show you a couple of examples. Now again, I mentioned I don't have shadowing on these. You'll kind of notice that it's a more of a, of a flat graphic design type of look. Um, you can add shadows if you would like to. I explain how to do that in this other tutorial of mine that you'll want to look for on my YouTube channel. I also explain in this video why sometimes you don't want to use shadows and, and how you can achieve that look as well. All right, here's this page design, this template, and I thought this would be really great as a title page in our Alaska binder. So we went on an Alaskan cruise in 2010, took our children, and when we went, I actually took a binder with us because we had received some materials from the cruise line that I wanted to keep with us. And then I also, you know, remembered from a previous cruise in my life that they give you a lot of papers on the cruise. You get daily itineraries, you get sometimes menus, and they'll have photographers on board and you'll be able to get prints of photos. And it's always hard to know how to pack those home without getting them all wrinkled. So I brought a binder with page protectors and just added to it during out the trip, throughout the trip. And it was great because when I came home, I pretty much had a scrapbook done and I just added a few other layouts of photos and some details. So I thought this would be a really good title page. So I picked these photos to kind of represent our trip to Alaska. And I knew I just wanted a little simple paper for the paper border. I knew that you know, there was a lot of blues in those photos and I thought of the waves in this pack. I thought that would be a good one. So you can see how it turned out. I'm really happy with it. Um, I think it will be great as part of our binder. So easy, easy project. Um, here's another template design from that pack. This one um, kind of struck me as that it would be really good for an insert in a holiday uh, mailing or maybe a newsletter. It's a great way to showcase a really special photo and add some more personal details. And I used it for one of my Lego photos from our trip to Hawaii. And I, if you don't know, I do love Lego very much, especially the minifigures. And we collect a lot of Lego sets. Um, my son and I actually have an account on Instagram called Toy to the World, where we post a lot of these fun photos. So that's just a hobby of mine, something on the side for fun. And I thought this would be worth journaling about and uh, using this sort of emphasis area to come up with my own title of the scene. So really fun. So why would you want to scrap in this size? I've already mentioned some reasons, but a lot of people, it's really important for them to be able to print their own pages on a home printer. It's more economical or more convenient for them, or it's just their preference. And you certainly can get a good quality from a lot of printers. I have a nice um, Hewlett Packard printer. It's in the 9000 series. It's not meant to be a photo printer, but it does a great job. Um, I just be aware that when you are printing at home, your ink quality and um, longevity won't be as great as if you worked with a professional printer. Um, they have, you know, of course, better papers and better inks. But for most cases, you know, it will work just fine. Not everything's going to be a hand-me-down keepsake, especially if you are just working on some projects or, um, or if funds are just really limited. So that's a great option. It's also really easy to find three ring binders in all uh, price ranges and page protectors. Again, just be careful. Your page protectors are photo safe ones. Um, most scrapbooking stores will have photo safe ones and um, even some office supply places do. And if your if your funds are really tight, you can always print these, put them in the 
cheaper three ring binders now. And then if you want to upgrade later, you can do that. You don't have to, but that's a nice option. This size is really great for school and work projects because this is the size that everybody works with. I did homeschool my kids for several years when they were teenagers um, before, you know, everybody who's, who's doing it now out of necessity. But um, this was a great size for us. And we put together many binders for different topics. And so this is a nice size to work with. Again, it's a great way to add something into your holiday mailings or to a newsletter. And some people just really prefer this shape. It's they like that better than the square. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great shape. So what if you want to use this size on a square layout? Like what if you really like these templates, you want to use them? Or say you even just have something at home that's like a flyer that is a keepsake and you want to put it on a 12 by 12 layout. So I'm going to show you some tips for that. Um, you can, you know, add the finished image right onto a 12 by 12 background and you can add some papers to help you make that into a square. You can also import all the layers and I'll show you that as well. So if we take this Christmas page that I did and I want to turn it into a 12 by 12 instead of the rectangle, I thought it would be great to just use another paper from this same set because I already have everything from this set and it's going to be really easy to coordinate. So you can see that what I did is I put my eight and a half by 11 into a 12 by 12. I grabbed it by the corners and made it, I resized it enough that it fit the whole space. But of course it's not going to be square because it went resized to a square. So I just added a paper underneath and it formed a border. I really love stripe papers for that. They make really great borders. Uh, with my garden journal page, I took a paper from the Groovy Greens paper pack and I just centered the eight and a half by 11 layout on top of it. And now you have a 12 by 12 page. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's a super easy way. Great little hack. Okay, with uh, putting these, uh, an eight and a half by 11 template into a 12 by 12 size, there's a little bit of Mm, technical knowledge that you need. It's a, more of an advanced project, but it's not hard. It just takes a little practice. So I've got it open in my Photoshop elements and I want to make sure that I, I select all of the layers at the same time. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to open my new blank file. So I've got, I want to open it as a 12 by 12. And again, I go over a lot of this in my um, template. Uh, tutorial, but make sure you have all of the layers selected on the side. Now there's a wrong way to do this. And sometimes it's easy to forget. You may think I can just drag it from the bottom up, but if you look at it, it imported it all as only one layer, even though I had all those layers selected. So the better way to do it is have those layers selected and go from the screen into the bottom um, photo tray where you have that other background ready to go. Now you're going to, while they're all still selected, you're going to want to grab them by the corners to keep the proportions. And I'm doing this quickly. If I was really designing a template, I would be taking a lot more time to measure exactly, center exactly. This one, um, so what I did there is I just only stretched the background paper. I didn't stretch all of it. And I'm going to only stretch the border. Okay. And that way, and even if it goes a little off the edge, that's okay too. It's not a big deal um, because you're not like professionally designing these. All right. Now I can leave it just like that. I think it looks great with the photos still the same size. But if you want to use more of your space, you can just select the photo spaces and stretch them off to the side. They are going to be, you know, not the same shape they were before. They'll be longer or wider and more narrow, but that's okay. And I always turn on my grid and often my rulers with this. 
but the grid is a quick cheat way to get it lined up with some of those lines and keep it even on both sides. So that I think looks good. I mean, it's a little bit of a, of a wider shape, but I think those look great. You can also change your text box. You don't want to just stretch your words. You want to change the actual text box to be wider. Um, and, you know, you can leave the title the same or you can change it. But that's a really great way to turn an 8.5 by 11 into a 12 by 12. Now, when I save it, I always save it like with the name altered in it or something to let me know that I changed the original template. You don't want to just save over a, a template because then you've changed it forever. So this way you have a new one. And so that is important when you're saving as well. Now I get a lot of questions about how to change a 12 by 12 template into an eight and a half by 11 because eight and a half by 11s just aren't as commonly made by template designers. Most scrapbookers really are square scrapbookers. And so it's, you know, usually better to be catering to the majority when you are selling something, but there are plenty of people who love the eight and a half by 11 and I'll do some more in the future for sure. But if you have some of my other 12 by 12 templates, you may want to resize them to fit an eight and a half by 11 size. So I'm going to show you um, how to do that. Again, it's a little more advanced. It takes a little patience and practice. And either way, whether you're sizing up or sizing down, not every template's going to look good. So you just kind of have to use um, your best judgment. All right. So this is from my uh, beautiful blues template set. And I think this particular one would work really well resizing. And so I'm going to open them all up. I'm going to select all of, well, first I'm going to open a new file again, but I don't need a 12 by 12. What I need is a US paper size letter standard. And that's, that's where the name standards came up from for this, these sets, because in the US, this is the standard size of paper. So I'm going to select all those layers on the side. I don't need to select the white background because I'm also moving it to a white background, but you know, often you're selecting the background too. Okay, you can see it came in too big now instead of too small. So I'm going to grab that corner and I'm going to resize it, keeping all the layers selected so that I'm keeping the proportions. And I'm going to fit it inside this rectangle. And again, I'm kind of rushing through this. I'm not using, you know, as strict a measurements as I normally would, but I'm going to put that grid on because that kind of helps me. Now I can still stretch the whole thing lengthwise too, if I want, uh, but it will distort all the shapes. So you can see that when I do that, we have really kind of tall, skinny photo areas right there. I don't think I want that. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to just resize again. And once I get it fit into the rectangle, then I will only select a few layers to stretch. Okay, so once I have that in place, then I'm going to take just the side paper strips and make them taller. So there's that one right there. I'm just gonna make sure only that one's selected. And then I'm going to grab it with my cursor and stretch that. I'm going to also do that with the larger paper border. And I think this is going to look really good in this size, but it does change some things about the design. What happens now is I have a lot more space for journaling. And I also could put like a title up there or something to make better use of that space. And I'm going to again, save it as a new altered name. 
if you want to try some of my designs for free, uh, I always include a free download in every newsletter. I didn't know if you knew that, but you can sign up. I'll leave a link in the comments or you can sign up on my website. But that's one way I like to thank my newsletter readers as I always include a little something fun to download. So it's worth signing up. And I want to thank you for watching today. I really appreciate all my YouTube watchers and subscribers. Thanks so much for being here.